Do you have the guts to commit seppuku? Minasan konnichiwa and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. In this channel, I, Shogo, introduce various topics about Japan. So, learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, this is your one step deeper. And today, I'm gonna be talking about this topic. Were there any woman samurais? It's probably a question I got over a few hundred times when I was working in the tourism industry. First of all, we must understand that generally only men can be samurais. This is because 1. Samurais were warriors, and women were obviously vulnerable on the battlefield. 2. In the Edo period, it was a law that only men can be samurais. However, this doesn't mean that women were completely unrelated to swords, and there were many famous women samurais left in history who lived as warriors. Let's dig into this topic by looking at the women of the samurai families, women guardians called beshikime, and two famous women samurais. Let's go to the The women of samurai families all need to train the naginata and carry kaito to protect themselves. The naginata is a Japanese spear that has a curved blade attached to a long handle. It is still trained today as a martial art called naginatado. Because of its original culture of women training the naginata, even now, over 90% of the trainees are women. Kaito means the hidden sword. It's a very short sword that the women of the samurai families kept in their kimonos for self-defense. In emergencies, women would commit seppuku or harakiri just like men to protect their clan's honor. So you can understand, although women could not be samurais, their hearts and minds were as strong as, if not stronger, than those of men. In the Edo period, there were special women guardians called beshikime in certain regions. Their jobs were to protect the important women of feudal lords. So they were officially allowed to carry swords, just like samurais. Samurais, which was a rank limited only to men, could not be chosen as these guardians because the lords were afraid of unexpected relationships between their women and the samurais. Many women wish to be a beshikime because they were well paid and had a high social status. However, not everyone could become one because they had to undergo strict sword training and take education of courtesy and manners just like the samurais did. So most beshikime were women who were born in a family that owned a dojo and had already taken basic training while growing up. There are actually many famous women samurais, but I'd like to introduce the two that has especially stunning history. Number one, Tomoe Gozen. Tomoe Gozen was alive in the late 12th century, the beginning of the Kamakura era, a time of war and anarchy. Samurais, who were originally just hired bodyguards to protect landlords, started gaining more and more power. Eventually, they were so powerful that they began to rule Japan themselves. The government consisted of samurais, were called the shogunate or bakufu, and the first shogunate was called the kamakura bakufu. The first leader and shogun of the kamakura bakufu was Yoritomo Minamoto, his cousin and a samurai that played a lively part in winning him the crown was the famous Yoshinaka Minamoto. Tomoe Gozen was Yoshinaka Minamoto's beloved concubine and also a powerful woman samurai. Legends say that Tomoe Gozen was a beautiful lady with long hair and fair skin. But once she took her bow and sword, she became one of the strongest warriors on the battlefield. She was a general in a battle that reversed the state of war fighting together with Yoshinaka Minamoto and defeating a great army of a hundred thousand in just one night. Also, she was one of the five last samurais that fought with Yoshinaka Minamoto in his last battle where he died. She was ordered to run because if the enemies found out that he took his concubine along to his last battle, it would be dishonorable. She succeeded on running away as she defeated the strongest samurai of the enemy's troop to protect his honor. 
800 years have passed from the time she was alive, but her legends are still passed down today. There are 15 monuments of Tomoe Gozen all over Japan, and there is even a story about her in no theater called Tomoe. Number 2. Nakazawa Koto Nakazawa Koto was a woman samurai that was alive in a different time of war and anarchy, the end of the 19th century. Nakazawa Koto's father was the owner of a Kenjutsu dojo, so she took sword training as she grew up. It is said that her Naginata skills were so strong that she was able to defeat her father, the master, when she was 14 years old. Also, she was 170 centimeters high in a time when the average height of a man was about 160 centimeters in Japan. The end of the 19th century was a turbulent time of westernization. There were many samurai clans who were trying to overthrow the shogunate because they were dissatisfied with the decisions made towards facing western countries. They were called joishishi, meaning terrorists. Because the shogunate could not trust the samurais anymore, they recruited trained commoners to protect the important people of the government. Nakazawa Koto was willing to live as a man, so she applied to this offer with her older brother and went to Kyoto. There are many historical evidence left about her activities in Kyoto, fighting the joishishi with her talented sword skills. Eventually, the shogunate lost the battle against the joishishi, and a new government was established. Because Nakazawa Koto and her brother were originally just commoners, they were allowed to return to their home city. She stayed in her home city ever since, and she stopped living as a man in her 30s. She decided to live as a normal woman by looking for a husband and having a family. But she had just one rule. That man needed to be stronger than her. She died single in 1927 when she was 88 years old. So lastly, today's conclusion. Generally, women cannot be samurais, but this did not mean they were completely unrelated to swords. The women of the samurai family needed to train the naginata and carry kaito for self-defense. They even had a heart and mind strong enough to commit harakiri with the men. Some regions had special woman guardians to protect the important women of feudal lords. They underwent strict training of swords and courtesy education and were allowed to walk with swords, just like samurais. The two most famous women samurais left in history are Tomoe Gozen and Nakazawa Koto. Tomoe Gozen was alive in the 12th century, leaving many legends that are still passed down today. Nakazawa Koto was alive in the 19th and 20th century, fighting through the turbulent time of westernization. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so your help would mean a lot. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.